Good afternoon and welcome to Wine Wednesday. This is Kevin Addix, director of the Maryland Wineries Association. And we've got not one, but two guests joining us today from St. Michael's Winery. I want to bring up Mark Eman without an A and Corey Spies. Uh, welcome, gentlemen. Good afternoon. First thing I was going to say, you misspelled my name. Well, and so, you know, I'm, I'm fixing it right now. So there you go. Um, I thought I had been spelling it wrong for all these years. So that makes me feel better. <laughs> you know, autocorrect is a beautiful thing. Um, so, so first of all, welcome. And uh, you guys look to be in two different locations. Um, Mark's in a secure, undisclosed location, and Corey, that looks like work. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that, that would be the normal standard for our business. Is it? <laughs> so Mark's hiding out. Um, tell me, tell me what's happening this time of year at St. Michael's. Well, we have, as most wineries in Maryland, I'm sure we've just uh, mostly completed our crush season. So we've uh, we've gotten all of our gr harvested grapes in for the 2020 growing season. And um, so we're, we've just finished up uh, our last crush of our last grapes that came in, I guess, about three or four days ago. And so now we're just kind of going through the last bit of fermentation that happens and um and then you know we'll we'll we got a few things that we do to our, our red wines that, that go, go a little longer than the whites but uh, uh but yeah for right now it's a, it's kind of your exciting part of the year for for wine making is because you really you get to you know it's, it's a new vintage that's starting and so that's pretty much just tending to those wines for the next couple months so um, about those wines, so how many wines are currently in your lineup? So we've got just around, uh, I think it's about 12 to 15 right now. Um, we've, we, we've slowly have dropped out a couple just because of the, the, the varieties that have been available to us in the past have kind of not been available as they were before. So we, we have, taken some off. I think at one point we had up to about 20 wines that we did, um, but we've, we've kind of narrowed them down to the ones that do well in the tasting room. And um, that's the, those are the, you know, nice dry wines we keep on hand. And then uh, of course our, our sweet line that we do, our golly wobber line, it uh, we're up to six of them and they are out in uh, stores everywhere in Maryland. So we do, most of the time, that's what most people are going to see of our of our St. Michael's wines uh, in a, in the general public. You're going to see the Gollywobber line, which we retail around to all the um, retail stores and throughout Maryland and and through Delaware as well. Uh, so, but then our dry wines, which are just available at uh, festivals and our our personal tasting room in St. Michael's, um, we you know we, we've uh, I think there's eight of them at this point. And, and Mark, what's a golly wobbler? Well, it's, it's a real word. It's the name of a sail on a schooner. And there's some fun uh, sail names on schooners. There's the upper and lower spanker, which we haven't developed a product for that yet. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. So going with our whole theme and, and the uh, Chesapeake Bay log canoe and all that, which is uh, the rigging is, is referred uses uses all the schooner technology. Right. Verb, verbiage, um, uh, the foremast and the aft mast, which are just shortened right. foremast and aft mast. Um, and so we're, since we're in St. Michael's, it makes all perfect sense. And um, a long time ago, somebody came up with, hey, there's this word, this sale, and we just ran with it and spent, geez, 15 years we've been using that and just expanded and expanded. Um, back to what we were talking about a second ago, for instance, uh, Jenny Schmidt used to grow this really amazing uh, Sangiovese. And I think it was one of the only ones in the, in the, in the state. Um, and it was proved to be a very, very, very challenging grape uh, to grow, but we bought the whole block from her every year. Yeah, made a great wine. Yeah. Great wine. Loved it. And, and, um, and one, one day 
uh, midsummer or something, she sends me a picture of, of that block of vineyard all sprayed with Roundup. <laughs> She's like, I'm done with it. Yeah. So, yeah. So are you are you always on the lookout for for new things to make, or do you feel like you've kind of found what you're doing and you're sticking to it? My experience, I mean, Corey can speak to this better. Is this stuff comes over the transom that we weren't looking for at all, and but you know, if we can fit it in and give it a try, we generally do. Um, but uh, we're, no, we're not like you know beating the bushes trying to come up with new products at this point. Um. And then, Mark, I remember, you know, way back in the beginning when when you and I first met, I think it was at Wine in the Woods. It was. And you walked in and... With we your, had, old, your old buddy from the computer lab at Loyola, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Seth and I worked some late hours at the help desk. Yeah. Um, so, so your comment to me was you were trying oh. to figure out whether you're going to make wine or women's shoes. <laughs> That's what she said to me. And I, I remember saying, well, today we're going to make wine. And, and we walked around and I, I think you saw the, you, you were very observant and saw the success of, of uh, wine at certainly events and the types of wines that would do well at events. And, uh, you know, re really kind of impressive what you built. Oh, thanks. Yeah, sweet wines. <laughs> yeah, well, at events, yeah, it, it tends, to, tends to go sweet. Um, yeah. So did... So Golly Wobbler was your first truly sweet wine, right? Yeah. I mean, if we, I can do more of the history and Corey can talk about what we're doing now. Um, yeah, we started literally with $40,000, not a big budget for a winery. You know, the old adage in the wine industry is how do you make a million dollars in the wine industry? You start with two. Um, and so uh, we made, uh, I think we could afford was, and we only had two tanks, which you need one to rack to, um, a, a little teeny pump, a little teeny filter, some very crude lab equipment. And we got some Chardonnay in, and then we divided it in half and made a, a, a no, Chardonnay, of course we couldn't afford any barrels at $40,000, and turned the other half into, a, added a little acid, added some sugar, and made uh, what's called uh, St. Michael's White, which we still have to this day, but today it's made with Vidal which Corey will talk about later. It's a very versatile grape. We think it could be easily Maryland's white grape. Um, and then we sold a little bit of that in the fall. Actually, we started wholesaling it because we didn't even have a tasting room yet. Um, and what are we going to do? We can't open a tasting room next year with just two wines. Um, so we um, looked around and found that um, there's a place in New York that, that um, stores grape juice and you can buy it later in the year. Um, and one of the great juices they had was Concord. And I never in my life considered making a Concord or, or have ever consumed one. Um, so reluctantly, we it was born. There you go. So we it got Concord in and made it into a sweet wine and got, came up with the name Golly Wobbler. And uh, guess what? That one sold out immediately and we had to get more. Um, and it just went on and on from there. So it just... Um, then we did the sister wine of Concord, which is Niagara. And then we did the blend of Niagara and Concord. And then we branched off into various flavors. Um, and it's uh, currently, I think it's 70% of our business so in terms of revenue. Wow. Yeah. And, and the retail price on an average bottle of Golly Wobbler? Well, that's the funny story as well. Um, when we first started selling it, it was $10 a bottle because that was just easy. But it sold so darn fast, we raised it to 12 and it didn't seem to stop anything. And then the later Golly Wobblers, which uh, have a lot more expensive ingredients, for instance, the blackberry, blackberry juice is very expensive, um, and peach um, are 14. So, so it's 12 and, or 14. And it still hasn't slowed down. <laughs> no, actually, we're um, in the process of uh, looking to expand to Texas. Wow. So we've submitted everything. So, so you are distributing out of state? Well, Delaware currently, and okay. a little bit in D.C., although D.C., Problematic. Um, it's about it's a quagmire di distribution out of state, and then the rules and and the states. Oh, yeah. like Pennsylvania is, is a controlled state. You know, it's like it, it's brutal. Um, uh, anyway, so I, it, I have family in Texas, and Texas, uh, Maryland has six million um, citizens. Delaware about a million, um, and Texas has thirty million. So. If we can get traction in Texas, I think that will uh, go a long way. 
and and I know they drink wine in Texas. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, there's a huge thriving wine industry. Oh yeah, yeah. We bought our bottling line. I don't know what's that. Twelve years ago, Corey. Ten years ago. Um, oh, yeah, I think it was around 2010. Makes it sounds about right. Yeah, from a, a Texas winery that had grown so much that their bottling line was insufficient for them, so they sold it to us, lock, stock, and barrel, a whole thing with whatever regulators and locks on the door and everything completely functioning. So, um, so, so there's rumor that there are some wines to talk about. Yeah, go for it, Corey. That uh, Corey. Yeah. Um, so we've. Yeah, we've kind of, as we were talking earlier, just kind of finding our place in uh, in our industry. And being that we live, or, or our, where our winery lives in St. Michael's is is a big tourist town. And so I think along with that, with that constant flow of uh, of traffic of people just looking for entertainment, I think it uh, it's we, sweet wines have always suited that area as well, um, because it's not typically a place people are coming to look for wine. As where where the the wineries that are more out in your rural locations or or off the beaten path are people that are wine drinkers going to look for wine. So um, you know it's always been a big thing for us, and and it's like you were just asking. It just it has never slowed down. It has only sped up, and we have uh, you know it's it's always been that battle of how far ahead do you get when the when the sales are going well. Um, whether it'll continue or it at, or will not. So, um, so our big wine nowadays for us is the Golly Wobbler Black, um, or sales wise, and it's it's a blackberry uh, Merlot blend that we that we make and um, and sweeten it, and um, it's it's our it's it's. But we've all what's uh, a lot of people realize or I, I guess I hope people realize it but um, wine doesn't just automatically sell itself um, Mark's been many years going out and getting on the uh, the you know war path to, to wine stores and getting these wines onto people's palates and, and having them drink the wine and and really asking their wine stores to uh, to supply it so um, you know there's I know there was years where I loaded up loaded up the truck with a pallet or two of wine and Mark left and, you know, come back the next morning with an empty truck and do it again the next day. So um, it's, it's really was a late, uh, a, you know, a, a long process of building this brand, but, you know, it did a great job of it. So um, this is our, bottle. hold that bottle up. It's our main, our main wine that we, you know, we make the most of this. Um, and I think one of the good things about what, what, we also did at St. Michael's is we've always kept the labels to, to look at as an impressive bottle of wine. So even though, you know, a lot of people give the stigma of sweet wine being, you know, not quite the, the, uh, the status of your dry wines, people that do still, you know, even though they do want to enjoy a sweet bottle of wine, it makes a bottle, you know, still look nice at a, you know, event or, uh, on your, or even in your wine cabinet. Um, our, uh, I brought these these three in too. These three here are our. Um, this is what we make from the the Vidal grapes that we were talking about, and it, it's 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 really it's been a nice it's been a nice grape. Um, it, and the greatest thing about it is its consistency, and that it's it's usually going to produce a some amount of quality grapes every year. Um, the, the yields may go up and down, but in the end, you're typically going to have a, a decent quality grape to make some nice white wine from. Um, so in these hard years like 2018 and then this year as well, that's been brutal on growers. There still has been those Vidal grapes available. So over the years, we've, uh, like Mark said, we started with the St. Michael's White, which is a, it's a, um, just the, now it's hundred percent Vidal and it's about 27 or two and a half percent sugar. Um, so we, we, you know, sweeten it just a, just a little bit to, to allow people that, that don't quite like the, the complete dry wines to have a nice wine to enjoy. Um, and then our Vidal reserve is 
typically the same wine that we we uh, we we leave to to dry. It, it's it's a dry wine, and um, still the nice Vidal is a very nice fruit forward white wine. So it it, um, it it's it's a nice nice white table wine, okay. and then we yeah. also do a sparkling with it and. Um, the sparkling in the past, what we've what we typically done is it's been a, a early harvest Vidal. Uh, try to get it with the acids a little bit higher, and um, you know a little bit lower bricks. And originally we were doing bottle fermentation with the, or secondary fermentation in the bottle with this, and um, and then we've the more we've we've fooled with it and we've done other types of ferment uh, carbonation. Um, it didn't seem to matter how you made it bubbly. It's just people, if it was a good quality uh, sparkling wine, people, you know, we, we, it always had a good sales for us. So, so it's one, one grape, all three, all three wines. And um, it's a really, you know, it's been nice to be able to have that available to us every year. Whereas, you know, some years our Sauvignon Blanc won't even make it to the right. warehouse or, you know, Pinot Gris might make it, but it's, you know, it looks like crap and it, you know, doesn't make a good quality wine. So, um, you know, that's been a nice, nice yeah, thing. Mark, this, Mark, you had something. Yeah, this year we actually had a, a little overabundance. Uh, if you could pull up the Golly Wobbler bottle again, I just wanted to point it out that if you look at these other um, uh, logo things, that, that that's the regular sales on a log canoe and the striped sale right there, that is the Golly Wobbler sale. That is the Golly Wobbler. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so we know that Vidal makes great wine for you truly as a workhorse. So you, you're making three wines out of it. Mm -hmm. Um, do you still make the long splice? Uh, we were making the long splice until, uh, last, we actually, we used to have a small vineyard in, um, y Mills, which is just a small town right outside of Easton. Most people probably don't even know they drive by it when they go, when they're going to the beach. But um, it's a little town, and it had a little half acre vineyard there that um, it, you know, the, the gentleman that started it tended very well. And then as he left it, it got left by the wayside. And then, um, you know, we, uh, my family tried to bring it back to life, but it, it was just far gone. So, far we, gone, yeah. so that that save all that was where our save all came from for the long splice, which the long splice was a seventy thirty save all Chardonnay blend. Um, and so, once that left, we kind of were looking for save all, and we had a grower put put a block of save all in when they were looking to plant some grapes. But um, we just we haven't had the we haven't had the grapes. They haven't made it to the back to the press yet, so um, we're hoping that that you know if that does develop again in the future, that'd be great. Uh, but Long's Place was never a, a wine that was you know a, a must have for in our in our tasting. It was a nice nice wine to put in our lineup, but um, you know it's yeah for me for me I always it was it was always the Chardonnay was always better. Um, mm -hmm. so it was, it was, and I've always looked at something that, you know, when you, when I taste the wine and I know it's for everybody, if you taste the wine, I do like it, but I'm going to buy that one. Cause that, yeah. you know, that one's better. And I always felt that with yeah, the long so spice. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, it, it's, it was, but uh, you know, there were people that pref did like that little bit of, um, you know, save all in there. And, and, uh, it was, it, it always sold what we made. Um, so that's always an option to continue in the future if we get the right fruit. Uh, so, um, And then, so you, you also have a whole suite of red wines as well that you produce and then. Yes. Yeah, so currently we do, um, we do two Maryland reds. We have a Merlot and we have a Cab Franc mm -hmm. and, um, and I, I, Cab Franc personally is my favorite. Uh, red grape and, and and that tends to go throughout where whatever location you go whether it's here california or somewhere else it really it's i enjoy cap front um but it's another grape that's not always gonna be there every year uh whether it's quality or color um like this year um 
I, you know, I haven't haven't seen a lot of grapes in our area that that made it all the way to full color. Um, we we did have some nice looking Cab Franc come in this year, uh, but it just, just didn't have the the color in the skins that we, you know, you'd want to in a good r red wine. So, right. um, but it, I think we'll might develop a couple of products for us out of that this year that might, you know, have a, a, a maybe have a couple of rosés this year that that hold for a couple years. And so if it happens again, we do it again. Um, but then we also, we do a Merlot. Um, Merlot seems to be, you know, one of the more consistent red grapes for us as far as quality that we get in. And, um, and it really, it's, it's a nice, you know, nice consistent red wine, good, good, uh, you know, good flavor, good and good quality wine. And, um, and we also do a Chamberson, and uh, I, it's Chamerson for me is is one of those wines you, you, you know, you make it because the grapes there, and it's a good, it's a nice, it's a nice uh, consistent red wine. But again, it's to, usually for me, it's I'm going to prefer another red wine over a Chamerson. But there, you know, there, it's never a bad wine, but it's it's usually just you know a a a, a filler in your lineup for your tasting. Um, well, Corey, also, before you jump ahead, yeah. uh, Mark, am I, is my memory serving me right that way back when you heisted a skipjack and brought grapes right. down to Chesapeake? Yeah, we did. So um, I don't know if he's still in business up there in Havana Grace. Yep. Mount Felix. Mount Felix, yeah. So we had an arrangement with him to buy grapes from him. And uh, there was a skipjack, a nonprofit that, that sails out of Havana Grace. And once a year, they come down the bay, happens to be in the fall during harvest um, and uh, to uh, to participate in the skipjack race, which they have or they had annually for this year, I guess. Um, and so they were coming down the bay anyway, and I'm a longtime sailor. I lived on the sailboat for six years. And so we, we uh, you know got a bunch of press out of it and loaded up the a bunch of the grapes on the deck of the skipjack, which is um, pretty true to form of what skipjacks were used for in terms of oystering and stuff like that yeah. during the harvest season that they definitely would be loading up all sorts of, you know, support before the Bay Bridge or anything, all sorts of Eastern shore produce and hauling it off to market in Baltimore. So um, it was historically an accurate thing to do with the skipjack. Yeah. It was a, a nice day. We got a lot of press out of it. Uh, so that was. That yeah. Was and, 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 and the wine, and the wine was pretty good too. I think I still have a bottle of the skipjack Martha Lewis. There you go. Yeah. And I had a painting by a famous, um, uh, what was his name? Mark. I forget his name, but he's a really, really famous, um, uh, I think it was line drawing actually, but an uh, 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 artist of, you know, Ch Chesapeake folklore and stuff. So, yeah, so, that, cool. was, gosh, that was years ago. That was yeah, yeah, yeah. A decade ago, maybe, yeah. Oh, at least, cool memory. All right, I, I saw a tall skinny bottle. Oh. Yeah, so, so this is our, this is our chocolate Zin. It's another, it's, it, I, it almost tends to end up being a seasonal wine for us. Um, it, it really takes off between that that holiday season between um, Thanksgiving and, and Christmas, uh, and uh, it's just a it's a um, typically we get juice in a Zinfandel and uh, make it as a as you know typically red wine, and then we we add chocolate to it and sweeten it, and it's a it's a nice you know considered a dessert wine. Um, real, real pretty bottle. We dip it in hand dipped in wax, and uh, so it's a nice, nice little, you know, table piece. Not in a in a nice wine to enjoy uh, as a dessert wine. Yeah, plus it's delicious. It is very, very good. Yes, yes, <laughs> yep. It's. I tell you, it's it's funny how um, it when you, if you ever do taste other chocolate wines, it's. It doesn't. You understand how it's. It's not as easy to just put chocolate in a wine and make it taste good. It, it, there is a blend of you know your your the certain type of chocolate to use in flavoring and the amounts to get it you know to where it's it makes it a a nice enjoyable wine as opposed to you know just yeah it tastes like chocolate. Yeah, <laughs> um, so, you can actually taste the wine. It's wine. Yeah. Some chocolate, not a bunch of chocolate, and maybe there's wine in there. I don't know. Not not, not yeah. alcoholic chocolate, right? Yeah, or or just uh, you know Hershey's syrup that uh, <laughs> somebody got over ambitious with. <laughs> so so, um, so I've I've heard that dipping uh, into wax 
is not an easy feat? Uh, it's it's one of those jobs that I personally will not do myself. <laughs> you know, I, um, I I'm not too proud to let somebody else do it. Um, I have I actually have a, a young lady that started working for us in the last year now that my taste room girls say that everybody can tell when she dips the chocolate. And so it's pretty much become her job now because yeah. her, you know, and <laughs> And, you know, she has no clue why or how or, you know, what but she hers just end up, you know, we, you know, you try to get that nice little drip going down to the on the um, on the label. And and uh, and, you know, mine usually end up it just I don't know, it just you can tell when I've done it. So it looks like I tried to get fired from doing dipping. Is what it happens, so. <laughs> I, I, I will look for her dips, not your dips. Exactly. Well, yeah. you, mine won't make it to the store. You'll never see <laughs> <laughs> um, What else do you have kind of in that, in that uh, dessert wine line? Are there other products or does it end at the chocolate Zin? Yeah, we, we do. Um, just our chocolate Zin. Um, I, and, as far as sweetness goes, or you know, it's similar to the the whole Gollywobber line. Um, so you know, I don't know what it takes to be noted as a dessert wine, whether or not you know uh, other characteristics other than just sweet. Um, but um, but yeah, I mean, I've heard a lot of people of t taking the um, the like the Golly Black and in doing. Uh, you know, Sundays with it and stuff like that with, with, uh, with other and pouring it on desserts themselves. So um, it's you know, definitely something that uh, it falls in that range and, and it's a little bit more economical too, to, to use the, the gollies. <laughs> yeah. The one thing I mentioned would be the, the newest golly wobbler, which would be the fortified version. Do you have one of those handy? I do not have that, but it, it yeah, we, we've just, I guess we've come out in the last last couple of years with two different two, two more gollies. We've we did a a, a sang, we developed a sangria type one that's just is like a blend of wine or a blend of flavors uh, in the golly. So it's not a it's not a specific flavor in there. It's it's more of a fruit juice kind of um, you know bunch of different flavors in there. And and it's 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 been a pretty popular wine uh, in our in our lineup. And then we we just did a we call it full throttle, and um, it's our blackberry wine with uh, fortified to eighteen percent. Uh, so it's a and it's it's been a it's been well received as well. And and that's a shorter bottle, right? Are they? The, are the they full throttle it looks just this, just like the the golly black. It's same okay. bottle, same you know, um, just. Just with uh, just fortified to eighteen percent. No, uh, the label itself has a, um, a cigarette boat. You know what I'm talking about? Yep. Speed boats, and it has a NASCAR. I don't know what font that is. Logo on the side that says eighteen mm -hmm. for the eighteen percent. Yeah. So it's a departure in, in that way a little bit. Love it. Yeah. So, so tell me if if you can predict what where what will we hear about St. Michael's in a year, two years, three years? Well, I personally, uh, you know, I really hope to, that our our wholesale does start going into the the other states. Um, you know, it's it's been it's been a really awesome job to have to be able to. It's almost like Mark gives you a challenge and you 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 you, you meet it, and then you know, six months later, he's like, "All right, got that one. Here's the next one." Next and challenge. So, yep. Yeah, so it's been, um, and you know, and when and everything was just so, so uh, small, you know, easy going when we had our, you know, our, our red, white, and pink golly wobblers, and then when uh, when we developed the golly wobbler black and it went online, and that fir that that first year it was just it was uh, it, it was. I, it was a lot of work, you know, just to keep up with it. And it's still, it still is almost when you're, you're sitting here, you're like, oh, man, everything's good. We're, we're pretty comfortable. We got, you know, plenty of black hair. And all of a sudden our distributor calls and says, I know it's, you know, I know it's March and we usually don't sell a lot of wine now, but I need 10 pallets of it. And you're like, Oh, like, like, crap. Like, we'll take it all. <laughs> right. So, um, so, you know, I, I really, you know, I, I really have, um, it's been fun to 
to to have that challenge, you know, continued challenge, and that to not get real, you know, comfortable. So I really like that wholesale market to continue to grow and um, and and then also, you know, I. I really would like to see, uh, you know, I really want the festivals to come back because uh, it's the hardest part for, for the, the retail and the, and the festivals is just been, you know, you, you don't, you don't have the jobs there to give, to give people jobs, you know? So it's, right. it's, um, it would be great to have, you know, that those things open back up to where we can get back to where we, you know, have, you know, that six, eight more jobs back in the company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're 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 dying to get our larger events back. That's been just mm. just a cultural shock to the local wine industry, all mm. of its members and our fans. Just mm -hmm. not being able to do it. So yeah. Yeah. on the on the bright side, all the or at least during the heat of it, all the people that were laid off were actually making more money than they were when they were working for us. So they were happy. They were not un unhappy, and I didn't have to feel guilty about it. And um, <laughs> And then some of it, because we hire really great people and some of our people actually, after that was over, went and got other jobs. We had to scramble around and find some other people, um, but that's going well. Um, we have the, the, what we call the tasty freeze window model going now. Um, so we took over, like everybody's done, took over a parking lot and put up a bunch of tables and chairs and umbrellas and uh, just have the one window with a fan blowing out and uh, and a little uh, platform to stand on and, and a, <clears throat> counter to, to serve the walk, up, walk up model yeah with all um one way you know touchless and all plastic and recyclable and yep yep it's all so good. That, that's been going well i've been surprised i was I, when we started it i was sure like lots of restaurants and stuff in a little boutique a touristy town that we were gonna have to be you know like they are closed like monday or tuesday or monday tuesday wednesday and just open more towards the weekends but it, it's been really strong i mean people have been just stir crazy and want to get out so and it's fairly safe for them to do so spaced out outside. So knock on wood, that's been going really well. Yeah. So, so distribution, um, further distribution, uh, hopefully getting back into events, mm -hmm. um, maybe some interesting new wines coming out. Um, what's the one thing you want to tell folks who are watching? Go, to your, more wine. <laughs> Go to your local store and, you know, Pick up, pick up our product there. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I tell you, it's, it's. Um, the wine industry has been. It's been impressive for me that um, how how it has survived so well through all this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it and it. In hindsight, you can look at it and say, "Yep, yeah, you know, people continue to to." drink wine and all, or, you know, and, and, uh, but it, it really, I think it also shows that people are continuing to want to support their, their local industries as well. I, you know, I think, I think a lot of our sale bump that's come, I think people when they're going into stores are actually choosing to go to that Maryland yeah, section and choose, choose that wine they want as opposed to going to the old standards that they always had before. So, um, you know, I would just encourage people, you know, I really encourage them to buy our wine, but, you know, to continue doing that and encourage other people to continue doing that because, you know, Maryland needs to be known as, you know, not to be afraid to try Maryland wines. And I think more and more and more people realize that, you know, the only product you're going to put out there to the public is a good product that's, you know, that somebody's going to enjoy. Uh, you know, nobody's going to enjoy all of them, but, you know, you need to have your products out there yeah. need to be a good quality product for somebody to be able to enjoy There's that wine. Something so. for everybody. And, and, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll end it there with advice to buy local, buy local wine, pair it with local cheese, pair it with local meat on mm -hmm. and on and on and on. Right. Local oysters. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Preferably all around St. Michael's. <laughs> I don't know. The southern, those southern oysters are a little better, I think. <laughs> those Virginia oysters can't be beat. Those salty ones, so. <laughs> they're pretty good, but we've got some good stuff in Maryland. We do got good ones up north. <laughs> don't you not? Don't you knock us northern? Oh, me. I, I've never declined an oyster. <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for joining me and, and uh, taking some time out of your day, and hope you have a good rest of the week. You yeah. too. And I'm glad I got with wine as opposed to uh, women's shoes.
Oh yeah, well I'm glad you got into the wine, and and although I would like to see what kind of women shoe you develop, but for for another discussion. So, um, well thank thank you both, and and thank you to everybody who tuned in, and and keep in mind you can always check out our Wine Wednesdays uh, on YouTube and archived on Facebook, and also stay tuned because we've got a very cool new wine club launching very 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 soon. All about Maryland wine, only for Marylanders. We look forward to your engagement and for sharing some very cool wines. So with that, cheers.